Number 23, complete and balance the following oxidation reduction reactions, which give the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atoms. And then we have letter C out of the bunch. So in this equation, we have P4, which is a solid, plus O2 gas yields blah. Cool. We have to figure out what blah is. Okay. So I'm going to write it on the left-hand side, just so I can make everything bigger, because I can't see. So we got P4 solid plus O2, and that's a gas, and we got to make a uh, product, right? Now, what type of reaction is this? Well, for one thing, it's definitely an oxidation reduction, right? But what's going to happen with these two atoms, right? They're different on the left side, right? If I kind of drew this, this would kind of be like a green blob, let's pretend, and this would kind of be like a yellow blob, right? And what's going to happen to them? Well, they're going to try to come together. And when they come together, they should make a different color. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was, that was terrible. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do this. Whee! They're kind of linked up now, right? But the phosphorus is still the green and the oxygen is still the yellow, right? This is a synthesis reaction, when you're taking two individual atoms and you're combining them to form a compound. But now here's the question, right? Which one is going to be oxidized and which one is going to be reduced? Remember, the oxidized atom is always going to be losing electrons, right? And if they're losing electrons and electrons are negative, that means that they're going to look like they're getting more positive. So the charges are going to look like they're becoming more positive since you're losing negatives. But now we got to figure out which one is going to be oxidized. You can only have one oxidation guy and you can only have one reduction guy. So we got to figure out which one's oxidized, which one's reduced. Okay, so let's go to our chart. Memorize this chart if you want, guys. It helps out a lot. Now, Let's see, on our chart, it looks like we have phosphorus, right? And phosphorus is over here. Normally, phosphorus would love to be a negative two, uh, three charge. And if I look at oxygen, right? Oxygen, when it becomes a compound, wants to be a negative two. Uh-oh, right? It looks like they both wanna be negatives. That cannot happen. One has to be the positive right? One has to be losing electrons, one has to be oxidized, and the other one has to be reduced, right? Which one is it going to be? The rule here is that the more electronegative atom is going to be negative or become a negative charge when it binds with somebody else when it makes a compound. So the more electronegative of an atom, so more electronegative, Literally, the word negative is in the term electronegative. So the more electronegative atom will get the negative charge. Well, now, who, who is the negative? Who is the more electronegative element, right? Who is oxygen or phosphorus? Well, electronegativity increases, so maybe I'll do this. Electronegativity increases as we go from left to right, and it decreases as we go from top to bottom. So between these guys, I'm increasing, decreasing. Seems like oxygen would be more electronegative. So that means that oxygen will keep the negative two charge when it forms a compound. But now what is the charge of phosphorus, right? We need to have the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atom. Now, this trend isn't going to tell you that, but what I can tell you is that for phosphorus, the highest charge that it could be is a plus five. That's the highest that it can go. Phosphorus can lose five electrons if it wanted to. Remember, the idea is to get to being a noble gas. 
That's why phosphorus would love to gain three electrons, become a negative, because it could just hop over three spots. One, two, three. Gain three electrons, become argon. He's chilling. But on the flip side, phosphorus can lose five electrons to become a noble gas. One, two, three, four, and now back up to neon. So by losing five electrons, it becomes neon-like. By gaining three electrons, it becomes argon. But in this case, phosphorus has to be the oxidized guy. So we know that phosphorus has to be a plus five. Now let's make that compound. P plus five, and oxygen is a negative two, as per the chart. Take those oxidation states, we crisscross them down to tell me what the compound is. There's telling me that I need five oxygens for every two phosphorus. Now we got the subscripts, so let's look at the compound. In this case, our initial compound is P2O5. However, there's a trick here, right? And this has something to do with a much more uh, advanced chemistry, I guess. Just starting off right now, you might think that this is the answer and you would put P2O5 up here. Now, technically that's correct, I guess, but there's a better answer here. Now, phosphorus, right, wants to stay together. All the phosphorus in this type of equation, and this is a special equation, it doesn't happen all the time, but in this equation, the four phosphorus want to stick together, right? In the compound that we have here, or that we made, it looks like you're going to get a split between two P2O5s. Here's two phosphorus, here's the other two, and that makes the total of four. However, this is a special case in which, in which those phosphorus do not want to break up. So I'm going to have to do something to this compound to get it to being a P4. Now, what can I do to this compound to get this subscript being a 4? What can I multiply it by? Oh, I can multiply the whole thing by 2. And that would tell me that I have 4 oxygens, uh, sorry, 4 phosphorus. But now how many oxygens would I have? I had 5, but now I have to multiply it by 2, and that would be O10. This is actually the more correct answer to this. Uh, it would be P4O10 instead of P2O5. Now, the stoichiometry is the same. This is just built up, right? This was like the empirical formula, and this is the molecular formula. However, in this instance, the phosphorus, because of the bond angles of what the phosphorus have, right, they don't want to break up, so they would like to stay together. So that's why you have to raise it up in this case. This idea doesn't happen all the time. I'm just letting you know that this is a special case. Okay. Now, let's balance this equation. There are four phosphorus here. There's four phosphorus, so that doesn't change. But now let's look at the oxygens. There are 10 oxygens in this compound, and there's only two here, right? There's 10, and then there's two. I need to balance the oxygens. Well, it looks like I'm going to put a coefficient in the front of O2. What times 2 will get me 10? Well, 5 times 2, right? So I'll, I'll just put a 5 here. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 oxygens. Whoopee! <laughs> we balanced it. And uh, if you want to know the state of this compound, this would be a solid this compound is not found on your solubility rules. Um, remember, this is like a very special case, okay? So this is a completed and balanced oxidation reduction reaction, and we did it, guys. Hopefully this helped. If it did, click that like button, click the subscribe button, and tell your friends, right? Tell your classmates that the service exists. We kind of want to get the word out there all over the world that, yeah, the service exists and it's completely free. Yeah? I think that's pretty cool. You're cool too, all right? Keep studying hard. You guys are awesome. And let's keep going, all right?
See you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.